Hi guys, Ratty from Inside FPV here. Finally got our hands on the new antenna tracker from Everything FPV. So I thought I'd do a build video and a quick review on it. This is what you get when you open the packet up. All of these black parts make up the two separate bodies of the actual antenna tracker itself. The tilt mechanism that goes on the top is made by Servo City and comes in a separate bag. You get a bag with all the hardware in, nuts and bolts and screws etc and then the bearing plate to mount the two boxes together. If you purchase the upgrade kit with your tracker, this is what you'll get in that packet. On the left is an LED back. Up the top is the wire slip ring. And then in the middle, you can see an extra bearing and some power and AV cables. This is the contents of the hardware bag. Make sure you're not missing anything from this picture. There is a tiny little grub screw in the bag with the gear, so make sure that you haven't lost that. Okay, so let's get started. Here's what you need for the first step. These are the stubby M4 bolts, M4 washers, M4 nuts, the bearing plate and the base plate with the hole in. You attach the bearing plate to the smooth side of the base plate with the bolts going from the smooth side to the rough side, so the nuts are on the rough side. Next you'll need these pieces. Be sure to use the countersunk bolts. They should fit flush with the aluminium plate once mounted. Now to mount the aluminium tube into its holder using the little grub screw. You need to make sure it sticks out a little bit further than I have mine here, but we can adjust that later on if you get it wrong anyway. And then we attach the tube and the holder to this plate. The holder needs to be on the smooth side of the plate with the bolts going from the rough side into the holder. Now if you bought the upgrade kit you need to find the bearings out of that. If not you can skip this step. The bearing is just press fitted into the hole from the rough side with the flanged head facing towards you. Now we join these two pieces together sandwiching the bearing plate in between using the last four stubby M4 nuts, bolts and washers. Onto the top plate which holds the servos. The servos aren't supplied with the kit so you will need your own. Any standard size servo should fit but the high tech ones are recommended. You want to push your servo through from the smooth side so it mounts to the smooth side with the wire coming out on the rough side. Don't tighten the servo down all the way at the moment as we're going to need to adjust its position later on. And then mount your servo horn to the cog which is provided. And then mount your servo horn onto the servo. You can just press fit the servo horn for now because we might need to take it off later. I attached one of the side plates to the base plate at this point. It just makes it a bit easier to line stuff up. You don't have to fully tighten it as you might take it on and off a few times. But you just use two of the self-tapping screws to hold it in place. With that side mounted, we can now easily line up the little golden pinion gear to make sure it sits in the correct position. Slide the pinion gear over the aluminium shaft and then attach the other side and the top plate but just hold in place. Make sure that the pinion gear lines up at the correct height to sit with a good mesh to your servo gear. And then with a sharpie or some kind of marker, make a little mark through the grub hole where the gear sits. You then need to take it all apart again to reveal the mark that you just made. Using a file, file down a small flat spot where this mark is. Do not go too deep as it is only a soft aluminium tube and you'll go all the way through. It only needs to be enough just for the grub screw just to bite onto. At this point I realised I had a miscast grub screw. It would not go in the hole. I contacted Rory at Everything FPV and he sent me out another one. The new grub screw was fine and it installed easily. Moving on to the top plate, you'll need to find these two pieces. The piece on the right can be found in the Servo City bag. If you bought the upgrade kit, we're going to need to modify the piece on the right slightly. If you didn't, you can ignore this step. You need to cut a semicircle out of one side using either a Dremel or a saw or file. Try to make it look similar to this picture. Then we can assemble them two pieces with the top plate with your servo in using the longest M3 nuts, bolts and washers. You need to sandwich the smaller piece underneath the piece that you modified like shown in this picture. Now we can fully tighten down the servo and ensure that we get a good mesh between the servo gear and the pinion gear. Put the box back together again and make sure you get a good mesh and then tighten down the servo. This part is another step for the upgrade kit, so again if you don't have it you can ignore this bit. You need to get your slip ring out of the upgrade kit and modify it like in the picture shown, so you just have two tabs left rather than the entire circle disc. 
It should fit so the tabs go alongside the servo. You may need to pull your servo horn back off again to get this bit in. And now you can see why we needed to modify the other part and whether you've cut away enough of a semicircle to make the slip ring fit. Once you are happy with the way the slip ring fits in that side of the plate, you need to check that it fits into the top of the aluminium tube with the golden pinion gear on. If that fits there, we can then reassemble the box again and test fit that it all fits together. This is where you will find out if you left enough of the aluminium tube poking out the bottom. If not, you can loosen off the grub screws and slide the aluminium tube down a little bit. Just be careful that you may need to file a new flat spot underneath the pinion gear for the grub screw to bite onto. Once you are happy with the way it all fits together, it's time to glue the slip ring in place. I put a blob of yoo hoo pour on the back of each tab and then press them into the top plate with the servo. Once the glue is dried, we can complete the final assembly of the main box. But first we need to power up the servo to make sure it is centered. I used the LED BEC that came with the upgrade kit, but you can use a servo tester or a receiver or whatever you have handy. Power up the servo so it centers and then join the top and bottom plates together so they sit with each other square. If they don't sit square, try rotating the part on the very left hand side of this picture 90 degrees. If you cannot get them to line up square at all, you can always loosen off the grub screw on the bottom of the aluminium tube and line it up that way. With the top and bottom plate lined up square and the gears meshed together nicely, it is now time to attach all four sides using the self-tapping screws. Note that the back plate, which is the one with the square hole in the middle of it, is attached on the side with the tiny self-tapping screws, not the same ones that you used for the side plates. This is the top box all put together, now onto the tilt mechanism. This is what you will find in the Servo City tilt mechanism bag, minus the one part we used earlier. And this is the contents of the hardware bag with all the screws in. The smaller black screws in the middle of the picture are labelled as self-tapping on the instructions, but mine weren't self-tapping. The first thing to do on the tilt mechanism is to attach the horn to one of the side plates. This is done using four of the 3 8 pan head machine screws. The screw should go in through the rough side, attaching the horn to the smooth side of the plate. Then we install the flange ball bearing into the other side plate. You push it in from the rough side so the flange is on the rough side. Next, using another 3 8 pan head machine screw, attach the small half inch aluminium bearing mount to the side plate. The screw goes through the rough side with the aluminium bearing mount being on the smooth side. Then we attach the servo to the servo plate. You push the servo through from the smooth side and the screws go through from the smooth side too. This is done using the 3 8 truss screws, the short ones that are supposed to be self tappings but are not. Do not fully tighten down this servo as we're going to need to adjust it later. Now we can start attaching the tilt mechanism to the main part of the tracker. Using a half inch Phillips pan head screw, attach the side with the bearing and the side with the servo to the part on the top plate which you cut the semicircle out of earlier. Then, using two 3 8 pan head machine screws, attach the one and a quarter inch round standoff in between the back of the two plates. If you have attached the two tilt side plates the right way around, this standoff will go on the side facing towards the slip ring. Now you need to power the tilt servo so you can attach the control horn with the servo centered. It's a good idea to plug the servo into a receiver at the moment so you can check the range of movement, because you might not actually want the servo horn stuck in the center of the travel. On the opposite side you need to mount the piece that you mounted the aluminium bearing mount to. You may need to use a spacer, there are two different size spacers, I use the large one. If you need to use a spacer, mount it in the position shown in this picture. The final part of the tilt unit is the faceplate. You mount this using two half inch flathead Phillips screws. You can now get the faceplate level and tighten up the servo with the access holes on the side. The final part I built is the bottom box or the power box. I started with this plate and mounted the power plug, the two AV plugs and the two servo leads. The servo leads are a very tight fit and may need filing down to fit in the hole. I then mounted the LCD back, just screwing the two screws on the side of it. With those two plates done, it's now just a case of mounting them all to the bottom. I found it a better fit if I put the LCD back next to the power plug. It's very snug this little box, so you may want to have a little fiddle around and see which way you prefer. With all four sides on, it's just now a case of wiring it up and attaching the bottom plate. 
So here it is all put together. Uh, apologies about the messy wiring. This is just the final mock-up before I check everything works and tidy it all up. First impressions are it's a very nice tracker. Uh, it's very strong and sturdy. Looks really nice and it moves very smoothly. It went together really easily apart from the odd issue I had with the mismatching screws etc. And I can't wait for the weather to sort its life out so I can get outside and test it now. If you'd like a follow-up video on how it works or how to wire it up then just comment below and I'll uh, try and get one of them made. Having put it all together now and seen it work I'm not sure if the upgrade kit is actually necessary. As it doesn't do continuous 360 degrees, the slip ring is a bit overkill and I'm sure just some neat tidy braided wires would be sufficient. I don't know how much difference not having the upgraded bearing in the middle would make, but the other components I'm sure you can find yourself fairly cheaply. Other than that though, it seems like a very nice piece of kit. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the tracker, then please leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, then please give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.